Pacific Peoples has been blasted for spending $40,000 on a farewell party for its outgoing chief executive last October. At a time when many of us are struggling to buy essentials like groceries and petrol, the ministry forked out just over $39,000 on the event, which included gifts worth more than $7,500, $3,000 on photography, flowers and ceremonial drummers, and more than $7,000 for travel and accommodation expenses for 12 guests. A review by the Public Services Commissioner Peter Hughes found that the spending was an inappropriate use of taxpayers' money. New Zealand Taxpayers Union Executive Executive Director Jordan Williams joins us live in the studio. Good morning. Good morning, Ryan. Um, I, I'm surprised. Well, are you surprised to see this? Well, I think it's just another example of a government agency having lost sight of the world outside of the agency or of Wellington. The, the, this is supposed to be the ministry that advocates for some of the poorest New Zealanders, and yet they live. They seem to live in a world where money doesn't matter. One of the things I found interesting from reading the report from Peter Hughes is the lack of care when it comes to a budget. It says around transparency, there was no budget set. Yeah, but I mean, the culture in the organisation must be pretty unhealthy. I mean, what employer spends two grand per employee for catering over a year. This is an agency that in 2017 had 34 staff. It's now five times that size, about 145 um, uh, FTE now. Uh, and yet, who could argue that the Pacific peoples are better off materially uh, thanks to that growth? This is an agency that, one, advocates for Pacific peoples. The other key role is to, ironically, uh, monitor grants and ensure that those taxpayer-funded grants are being well spent. I think you'd have to assess whether they are... The, uh, they are the best people to be doing that job. Is, yeah, because there are two questions here, and this is something that the opposition has been talking about. It's not just the spending, but the lack of progress on things like this. The Pacific Health and Wellbeing Action Plan from 2020 to 2025 is life materially better for our Pacifica communities because this agency exists. Yeah, well, I mean, at the Taxpayers Union, we believe that you're better to put the role of these agencies within the departments that are actually doing the frontline delivery of services, you know, health, education, uh, justice, for example. Uh, these sort of bolt-on type, they often used to be part of the Ministry of Internal Affairs but have now uh, spun out. I mean, I just come back to, you know, what are you doing now with 145-odd staff that you couldn't do with um, with 34? I mean, to put this in perspective, because there'll be some criticism, you know, 40,000 in the grand scheme of the size of government, mm. that's more than five years tax for a person on the minimum wage. Yeah. And uh, P Peter Hughes said, you know, this was a one-off, this is this agency, one bad egg. But then I note this chief executive who, he, he wasn't leaving Wellington, he was simply moving Going department... To a, a ministry. ...down the road. Yeah. Uh, and they probably got a welcome gift there too, I well, imagine. Well, I don't know about the gift, but they held another party oh, and they flew four or five members of his family to Wellington. So you can't say this is just one agency. I don't know of an employer that when the day you start, they fly your family into town. No, I don't either. I think the, the, the important point here is that this agency is also not alone in its extravagant spending, right? This is not just about the um, Pacific of People's Ministry. This is about a whole bunch of different agencies who are spending. And I think a lot of people in New Zealand would find it, it would call it extravagant at a time like this. Absolutely. I mean, for my generation that have borrowed up to the eyeballs, we had mortgage rates at three, that's going to be now seven yeah. um, as, the, as they roll off. There are a lot of New Zealanders, particularly provincial and rural, that are really struggling right now. And, you know, we had a minister uh, last weekend saying that New Zealanders aren't paying enough tax. I'd, I'd put to you that it is examples like this that suggest that Wellington just isn't catching up or it hasn't got with the program with where New Zealanders are right now. We've got a poll coming out later today, and I was digging into the numbers last night, and it's really interesting, the variance between what clearly the country is thinking and Wellington. 
Can you tell us what the pulse is? I couldn't possibly. <laughs> <laughs> More of the same, though, so it's a similar kind of trend to what's been happening. If you wish to become, if, if you want to donate more than $1,000 to the Taxpayers <laughs> Union, you'll get an early insight to it. I certainly won't be. <laughs> um, I've got my own money problems to worry about, as the rest of us do. 13 minutes after Good. 7, thank you. That's New Zealand Taxpayers Union Executive Director Jordan Williams. In a statement, the Ministry for Pacific Peoples, Secretary for Pacific Peoples, Geraldine Clifford Lidstone, says she accepts the farewell did not comply with the Ministry's internal policies nor the guidelines of the Office of the Auditor-General. And this, and this, she says, must be remedied with urgency. She says she has reviewed the policies and guidance on sensitive expenditure, expenditure to ensure a robust and reflective of the Public Service Commission's standards. We'll have more on that later in the show. 13.